Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is the brand new MacBook Pro 16. You'll be pleased to know that my MacBook was not actually in that box earlier. Uh, you probably guessed that. But I have actually had this for a couple of days now, uh, and I've got a few thoughts. I am going to do a more extensive review and also some more comparisons with the rest of the Mac lineup soon. But I also want to bring in this guy. This is my old MacBook Pro 16, the one I've been using as my daily driver for the past mm, just over a year. This came out October 2021. And fortunately, I have a slightly different color than you one. This is silver, this is space gray, because from the outside, these are physically identical. The only difference is this gets a new color matching MagSafe cable. Now I review an awful lot of laptops, and for me at least, this is, or at least was as close to the perfect laptop as I could get. Uh, of course, unless you want to play games, in which case Mac's not really ideal. Uh, so of course, I was extremely excited for the new 2023 M2 versions. We had the M2 Air launched at WWDC last year. We expected them to come out sort of at the end of the year, but they didn't. Uh, but here we are with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So what's new? Is it much faster? And is it actually worth upgrading to and paying the new higher price for? So headline upgrades. Both the new 14 and 16 can be specced with either an M2 Pro or an M2 Max chip, which Apple claim will give you roughly 20% faster CPU, 30% faster GPU, and about a 40% boost in neural AI performance. Not too shabby, although I'll put that to the test in a second. According to Apple, we also get an extra hour of battery life which I would test, except because I've been using this a lot over the last year, the battery capacity has actually gone down to 91%, which is not ideal, although I do use it a lot. So for my full review, I'm gonna have to get myself a new one of these to do a direct test. So it's faster, it lasts a little bit longer, probably. Uh, and also we have a bit of an upgrade to the connectivity. We get Bluetooth 5.3, which isn't a huge deal. It's a little bit more reliable uh, and more power efficient. We also get Wi-Fi 6E, which gives you access to the six gigahertz spectrum with up to two times the throughput. It has much higher bandwidth than Wi-Fi 6, which we had before, but it does require you to have a Wi-Fi 6E router or router. So faster, slightly longer battery life, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and HDMI 2.1. Now, most people are excited about the performance boost and how much faster everything is. But for me, it's actually this, the HDMI 2.1 port that I'm most excited about. Because let me show you my setup at the moment. This is the uh, old MacBook Pro 16 with the M1 Max. I have it hooked up via HDMI to this Asus ROG PG48UQ, a very nice gaming monitor, really. And if I bring up the settings menu, you can see it is limited to 60 hertz, 4K 60, which is fine, but it is not as smooth as the 120 ProMotion that you get on the actual main screen. So it feels like a bit of a step down. But now if we switch over to the new MacBook with its more advanced HDMI 2.1 port, you can see I get the full 138 hertz, or even a variable refresh if I want. So now you can get up to 4K at 240 hertz. This isn't even maxing it out, or probably more likely if you are a creator or a professional, hooking up to an 8K display, that is an 8K TV, where you can get 8K at 60 as opposed to 8K 30 before, which is, again, a much smoother experience. It's not exactly a run out and buy one of these kind of upgrade, but it's definitely a nice quality of life upgrade. In my little MacBook Pro 2023 wish list video, I had kind of hoped Apple might be able to shave a few grams off the weight. Uh, the 16 in particular is a bit of a chunky boy, although I can forgive it given how capable and powerful this thing is, but it does kind of make me think, do I still need the 16 inch version? The performance is basically the same between them, although you do get about four hours less battery on the 14, but it's an awful lot more portable. And with Thunderbolt and the new HDMI, whenever I'm here in the studio, I'll output to a big screen anyway. So do I need the 16? And it's a lot more expensive. Now this video is very kindly sponsored by these, the brand new Urban Ears Boo. What a great name. And these guys are a little bit different because they're made from 97% recycled plastics, like bottles, air conditioning units, and other junk. They're trash, basically. And the box is made of fully recyclable cardboard. E-waste is a huge problem, and I have a lot of time for brands who go the extra mile to help the environment. 
So big points there for sustainability, but we also get 30 hours of playtime. They sound great. We get dual mics on each earbud, so call quality is really good as well. Bluetooth 5.2, touch commands, they're water resistant, charge via USB-C, and the best bit is these guys cost just £69.99, which makes them a whole lot more affordable than most leading brands. But it comes in six different flavors, including raw, charcoal black, even cosmic pink. Now, if you're wondering, these regular Boo earphones are open fit, but you also have the option of the Boo tips, and they have a more in-ear fit as they use silicone tips. So if you're after a new pair of earphones, definitely give the Urban Ears Boo or the Boo tips a try, and I'll leave a link in the description below. And for just under 70 quid, I think they're a bit of a bargain. Okay, enough waffling. Let's talk about performance, because that is the main reason you might want to upgrade. And I've had the chance to run a few tests, and my results are pretty close, actually, to what Apple are claiming. I'm gonna run more tests over the coming days and weeks, but to get started in Geekbench 5, which tests the CPU, we're looking at a 15% uptick in single core and a 20% boost in multi-core, which actually is bang on what Apple claim. Then in the Premiere Pro Puget benchmark test, similarly, we're looking at a 20% boost. Now bear in mind, the M2 Max has the same processor as the M2 Pro. I don't know why I'm pointing to that, that has the old M1 Pro. Uh, the difference, again, same as last time, is primarily the graphics. We get way more GPU cores, up to 38. It also doubles the memory bandwidth, and the M2 Max allows you to spec up to 96 gigs of their unified memory. Although in this guy, I have 64, same as this. So actually, this is a perfect comparison. M1 Max 64, M2 Max 64. So in terms of graphics, and while I do appreciate these aren't really proper gaming machines, let's boot up Old Faithful's Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The M2 Max is 29% faster than the M1 Max, which is really within the margin of error of exactly what Apple were claiming, a 30% uptick in graphics performance, which is pretty significant. However, in my couple of real-world tests, I didn't see quite the same improvement. In Premiere Pro, exporting a 4K H.264 and also a 4K ProRes edit, it was 9 and 13% quicker respectively, which isn't that impressive. And firing up Blender and seeing how long it takes to uh, render 500 frames of this Ripple demo, the M2 Max was only 16% faster. Couple of thoughts. Firstly, you could potentially get better performance out of this if you spec it with the 96 gigs of RAM, which is very pricey. Uh, this tops out at 64, so this isn't fully maxed out. Also, the performance really does come down to your workflow. Are you editing ProRes in Final Cut Pro? Are you using Apple optimized software? Uh, and are you really taking advantage of the GPU? If you're not, then the max is gonna be a little bit wasted. And in fact, the performance between these two is not that significant that really it changes my workflow. And I know some of you will shout at me for using using Premiere Pro on this and not Falca or more likely DaVinci Resolve actually, I'm gonna have to learn that at some point. It doesn't enable me to really do anything that I couldn't do on this. It's all just a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother. It's sort of quality of life improvements, not that revolutionary upgrade we saw going from Intel to M1. What I did notice though, although again, I've only had this for a few days, is it does take longer for the fan to kick in on this than it does on this. I was rendering a video side by side at the same time and this started whirring up much earlier than this. In fact, I barely heard it wrap up until the end of the export. Although, that's not necessarily a good thing because this actually, to the touch, was cooler than the new model with the M2 Max. And I don't know really why a little bit of fan noise is a problem. Obviously, it's nice not hearing the fan, but I would rather it kick in and I can hear it. I don't really mind that much if I'm doing something intensive or you know a demanding workload and I want the best performance possible and also for it to stay cool. I'd be happy for the fan to come on at least a little bit. So while this, in my experience so far, seems to stay quieter for longer than this, in my brief testing, and it is brief, I need to spend a lot more time with this, it actually got hotter quicker. And that is about it. Same design, same screen, same webcam, keyboard, trackpad, same colors. I'd kind of hope there'd be a new sort of midnight or starlight version of this like we saw with the new Air, but alas, no. So simply it's a bit faster, although it depends if you can really take advantage of that performance and that isn't already good enough for you. Uh, HDMI 2.1, which is very nice for me and my setup, although not everyone's gonna be taking advantage of that. If you're using a pro monitor, generally Thunderbolt's still a better option because it charges the laptop as well. Bluetooth 5.3, an extra hour of battery life, and that's your lot, which is absolutely fine. I mean, this is already an incredible laptop and this is just a nice refinement, but the problem is in the UK at least, and some other countries, less so in the US, the price has jumped significantly. On the older 2021 models, the UK prices were around 100 pounds less than the US prices, 
but now there are 100 to 150 more. In fact, this 16-inch MacBook Pro, just the base model, versus the base model of the old MacBook Pro, is 300 pounds more expensive. Now, I get that's not really Apple's fault. There's a lot of inflation. Our government messed up the country a little bit, so, so the pound's not worth as much. But that doesn't change the fact that for you and I, if we're going to go out and buy one, it's going to make us think twice about whether this is actually worth it. So while this is objectively a better laptop, it's not the best value for money. And actually what you could do is go onto Apple's website and look at refurbished 14 and 16 2021 models. And right now a 14 inch M1 Pro is about 1460 pounds and the 16 inch M1 Pro is 850 pounds cheaper than the new 16 inch M2 Pro. Alternatively, if you're not married to the idea of buying a laptop, I would definitely check out the new Mac Mini with an M2 Pro, which I think is about £1,400. Pair that with a nice monitor, and you've got a really nice system for quite a lot less money. So let me wrap this up. And I don't want this video to come across as too negative because this was almost the perfect laptop and this is even more almost the perfect laptop. I love this thing. It's gonna be my new daily driver. I appreciate the extra uh, performance on the HDMI 2.1 port. I love this thing. And actually as it goes, having them both side by side, I do think I prefer the space gray. Although as I say, other colors would have been nice. The problem is in the UK, it's just a lot more expensive. I don't think it's fundamentally different from the old model, which you can get refurbished or perhaps just from another website for a lot less money. And I think this will do just as well for 98% of you. But what do you reckon? Tempted to upgrade or stick with the old one or none of the above? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see my full comparisons and reviews coming very soon, make sure you, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down there. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.